series of videos on the channel. We're going to con uh, cover our contributors' personal year-end favorites and year-end review. Uh, on during this first video, we're going to have Michael Ellenberger of Chicago, uh, who is an intellectual property attorney with a 107.43 half PR. Joost Remaker of Luanda, Angola, Africa, a photojournalist from Belgium who uh, won two of the men over 50 age group world marathon majors and set a PR 226 at Berlin 2019. Ryan Eiler, who is a startup entrepreneur with a 240 marathon PR at Boston. And this year he time trialed sub 15 minutes in several of the super shoes and sub 31 minutes. Finally, Marcel Krebs of Germany is primarily a trail and OCR racer. He's a legal technology consultant who focused more on road in 2020. Um, I'll just go through kind of the favorite shoes of the year, um, the shoes that I, I ran the most in, I liked the most, and, and, and you know, will continue to use in, in 2021 and beyond. I'll start with kind of everyday miles. Um, and for me, that's the Atreyu um, base model. It doesn't have a, a specific name. They have a higher end um, artist racer coming out in 2021, which we're all really excited about. The base model is uh, a shoe that they offer in a subscription package. I think it's something like $65 um, and you can get it sent to your house every three months, which is a, a new and, and kind of different way to buy shoes. But even without that model, it's, um, it's available for purchase. It's a really simple trainer, um, not a whole lot of flash to it. Um, this is just one of the colorways, but it's by far the shoe I put the most miles in between three different colors I picked up. It's super light, I think 5.6 ounces in my size and just a, a, a no brainer trainer just to, to put on and you can run fast, you can run slow. I, I love running in it. Um, for workouts and kind of mid-length races, talking non-marathons, I keep coming back to the, um, the A6 uh, Meta Racer. I don't know what it is about this shoe. I think that it's not the bounciest. It's not necessarily the fastest feeling, but it, it just has some sort of uh, benefit to it that I, that I keep coming back to. The upper is, is I still think, one of the best available. Um, the carbon plate is gentler than in some kind of more, I'm thinking more of the, the speed elite from Skechers. It's uh, a little bit more gentle than that, but it's still not a, a marathon shoe necessarily. I think you'd want something like a Vaporfly or an Adios Pro to go 26.2, but just for a 10 mile tempo run for a half marathon or 10K race, I think this is a great option. Um, I tip my hand a little bit on my favorite racing shoe of the year and certainly when marathons kick back up, Marathon shoe of the year, the Adios Pro. I mean, you can see here on the video, this shoe is chunky. This shoe is awesome. I, I've run as short as 5K in this um, when I was part of a, a virtual racing series this fall. Um, and I liked it for that. But I think that when we get going back to marathons and road half marathons, I mean, this shoe is, is really, really fast. It now has the world record half marathon um, and perhaps a, an attempt at the world record marathon. I mean, this shoe is it, you don't need the fast runners to tell you that it's it's fast. You don't need world records. If you try the shoe on, you're going to notice that it's it's unlike anything else. So it's just a, a terrific shoe. Hey, Michael, how how does it differ a bit from um, say the um, the next percent or some of the others you've tried? So the the difference technologically from this over over Nike's um, next percent and and four percent technology is the way that the carbon plates are used and and Adidas uses. Uh, rods and you can almost feel them this is a new pair so i don't have the imprint but as soon as you run in it you're going to see that they're the carbon rods are are imprinted in the bottom of the shoe and that's sort of the the difference over uh, a plated shoe is that it's a more metatarsal specific um feedback and you can notice it it's not i don't know that i would pinpoint it as rods absent any uh, marking but but you can tell that it's not um a true kind of scooped plate um, it, it creates a little bit more of an even feel, I think. Um, but beyond the carbon, I think that the big winner of the shoe is, is this Light Strike Pro Foam. I mean, it's really, really bouncy. I took him to the track to run a track mile and it was fast, but it just felt strange, like running on something this bouncy over tight turns. Um, so like I said, when marathons come back, I think this is going to be the shoe to wear. And I think you're going to see a lot of them on the start line. It, it won't be a Nike dominated field quite so much anymore. Um, the other two quick things I want to highlight in, in 2020 was obviously an interesting year. One is this ASICS um, mask. I, I don't know the specific name of it. I think it's the only running specific mask that ASICS makes, um, but it's, it's by far and away my favorite mask. It's the only mask I can consistently wear for hour or even a 90 minute run and not have to like pull off my face regularly. 
Um, it gets sweaty like any mask is going to, but it breathes much, much better than anything else I've tried. So I wear this pretty much every time I'm running outdoors. Um, and then a kind of a perennial shout out. I think I did this for, for 2019 and, and probably 2018 if I was around then as well. The Stride Foot Pod. I know a couple of our reviewers use it. I love this thing. I mean, I, I have become a bit of a, a treadmill user, which I didn't think I would be a couple of years ago. And so my biggest utility for this is really, really accurate treadmill tracking. Um, but it's also a way to get stride power, which is a, just a way to kind of analyze results beyond pace. Um, it's, it's a foot pod eclipse on your shoe. It's 200 bucks, but it's, it's absolutely a running device that if I broke it or lost it, I would buy it again, same day. It's, it's a no brainer. Hey, Michael, any, uh, any time trialing highlights or racing highlights you can share with us? I, uh, <laughs> this year I went back and I broke, I, go ahead. And what shoes did you use to do it? Yeah, so I this year I had two kind of interesting or, or good races, good performances for me. I ran, um, I think, a mile PR. I think that it was it was either an all-time mile PR or certainly a, a post high school mile PR, four thirty point low. Um, and it, for that, I wore a, a track spike, the Nike Victory Three. Um, and then I also went sub fifteen in the five K for the first time since college. Um, and nearing a, an all-time PR, and I and for that I wore the New Balance Fuel Cell 5280, which I don't have over here, but is is a really interesting shoe. It's kind of a hybrid between a track spike and a, a carbon plate racer. It has a carbon plate, but you wouldn't necessarily know it's when you look at it. It looks like a a sock or a track spike. Um, and so 5280 suggests it's built for the road mile. That's what New Balance tells you. I wore it over a 5k on the track without issue, and and really, really like that shoe. I think that's probably the fastest track shoe for mile or 5k you can get. Great. Thank you. Uh, uh, and I guess we'll go seniority by age. Yoast? So unmute this. Uh, here we go. Well, uh, 2020 running wise, it's been a pretty weird year. Um, I've, I've, done two um, time uh, virtual time trial type things. Uh, the first one was the NN team uh, virtual marathon where you had um, uh, four people run 10.5K uh, for a team. I did that locally with, uh, with a couple of other guys here. And the second one was uh, with uh, Road Trail Run International A Team, <laughs> the the ASICS uh, World Ekiden, which was um, which was fun to do at the end of the year. Um, as I said, it was it was a weird year, so I, I wasn't training for a marathon. So uh, I threw in a, a five to ten k block, and then all of a sudden this kind of um, came at the same time as the inv invitation for the uh, for the Ekiden. So. I, it, it was at the end of my training block and it went pretty well, I think, um, temperature considered here. Uh, so I was, I was quite happy with that. Um, 2020 has also been the year with my highest mileage so far. <laughs> I've never done as many miles as in 2020. <laughs> I th I've probably out of boredom for some part or whatever, but um, uh, I've, I've done over 4,000 miles this year. Um, so it's, uh, it's, been, it's been pretty interesting. Uh, we moved places, so I'm not running by the ocean as much as I used to. Um, it's a little bit warmer where we live now. Um, muggier still. <laughs> uh, Remind everybody so where uh, you live. Where, where are you? Where? I live in uh, I live in uh, Luanda, Angola. Um, so uh, a couple of degrees, well, about eight eight or nine degrees south of the equator in Africa, and uh, so it's it, it's it's. And if, if in absolute terms, the temperature doesn't go up as that high, but it's very humid and it's, and the sun is <laughs> pretty strong over here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's always, it's always interesting to train here and then go race uh, in Europe or in, or in, um, in the States and, 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 you know, uh, see all, see all people go to the shady side of the street. <laughs> because they're feeling too hot in their race or something like that <laughs> and i'm feeling and i do the opposite i feel too cold in the shade so it's uh, yeah it's it's also it's always very interesting but anyway uh so yeah let's hope that 2021 um uh at least the fall of 2021 uh, brings some races i've 
I've gotten in myself into London and Chicago, which are a week apart, I think. Uh, so it's going to be interesting training for two marathons in, in eight days. Let's see what Boston brings. Uh, <laughs> see, maybe I can pull off the three of them with one training block. Let's see. <laughs> uh, and I'll finish my, my six star uh, uh uh, with six stars uh, for the for the Abbott World Marathon majors and and also see if I can win the uh, remaining three ones in my in my age bracket. So that's what I'm gonna work towards in 2021. Um, so shoe wise, um, the first plated shoe I got this year, I I'd been running in the in the uh, the vapor the vapor fly the four percent and the next percent. The first one I got in this year uh, uh, for testing was this one, the Saucony Endorphin Pro, and it's it's my favorite tempo shoe for the moment because it's I, I really like the the rocker. It's um it, it it's really bouncy and fun to run, and it's a, it's a, it's an amazing shoe to uh, uh, to run. And I don't know if uh, I don't think my legs will keep as fresh over a long distance as in, as in the Vaporfly or the other one I'm going to talk about. Uh, but it's, 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 uh, it's an amazing shoe. Um, I really love it. It's one of my favorites of the year. The second one, Michael's already talked about it. Uh, is the, uh, mine has the markings <laughs> on the bottom. Um, is the Adidas Adios Pro. Um, I've I did my both of my um, uh, virtual races in them, and they felt they felt great all the way through. Um, I haven't really done uh, very high high mileage um, with uh, with uh, speed work in it uh, in them, so I can't really tell yet if I'm going to use them for the marathon or I'm going to stick with a pair of next percent or not, but. Um, I can feel myself edging slightly towards the uh, Adidas. Um, then the uh, third okay. shoe uh, I got. Yos, tell us yeah. uh, how many kilometers do you have and how the outsole is very unique. It's such an incredible thin yeah. material. I had it yeah, as one of the techs of the year really because it's- I can, I can actually look it up for you how many miles I have on them right here. It's not, that much, but it's also, yeah, it's got a decent pair of uh, amount of miles in it. Uh, Adidas, Adidas Pro. Uh, it's, it's got about, it's got around uh, 70 or 80 miles on them right now. Yeah, it doesn't really wear. It's thin, but it's, it's, it's always been thin. It's, it hasn't really shaved, you know, shaven off or anything. It's, um, it's all still there at the mid, so. It's a remarkable material. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very strong. People here for me is actually yeah. that outsole. God, who knows what it is? But um, <laughs> I don't. I don't really. Yeah. Well, maybe I should care. But I don't, as long as it works for me, it's fine. <laughs> uh, it's 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 an amazing shoe, and I like the, the the rods. As Michael was telling, it's um, it feels very different from a, from from a. A complete plate in that it, it the shoe actually you can with a, a plated shoe it's it's stiff in in all directions you know? and and this one you can actually you know you can get a, a bit of torsion out of it so your foot moves a little bit more naturally through the gate i think when you land and then you, your your foot is able to do this while you still have the stiffness of the plate lengthwise so it's uh, i think it's also unique in that in that aspect um well the third shoe uh which isn't out yet but for me it's <laughs> my favorite shoe of the year it's the hoka uh, mac 4 um it was actually my first pair of hokas um it's it's really an amazing shoe i've already put um something like 250 miles on them um you can see it's not really shown any wear, uh, you know, an exceptional wear or something like that. It's, uh, it's still uh, pretty, it's, well, it's dirty, of course, but it's, uh, <laughs> apart from that, it's really good. It's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's the shoe I, I grab 
most of the days when I just go out for a run. Um, I've done lots of long runs in them, recovery runs, just easy runs, whatever, you know, whatever doesn't need, you know, too much up tempo work or something like that. I, I just, you go and grab those. It's, uh, it's been, uh, it's been an amazing shoe. Um, uh, yeah, as far as shoes are concerned, uh, my own, my only disappointments this, this, this year have been actually shoes that <laughs> the only shoes I bought myself <laughs> and I had, wasn't sent for testing was, and both were Nike shoes, which is really weird. The, the Pegasus 37 doesn't work for me. And the alpha fly doesn't work for me either. It's just too weird on my feet. It's, um, uh, I don't know. It's, it makes me move in, in a funny way. And <laughs> maybe I should try another size or, you know, I don't know, but, uh, it's, it's, it's not working for me. So I'm, I'm staying on the, on the next percent or the adios for my next marathon. Um, non shoe related, uh, tech. I'm also a stride user as uh, same as Michael. I've been using it for a couple of years. Um, I'm not a power junkie or anything like that. It's, uh, it's, but it helps me. It's, it's, it's consistent in, in terms of pacing. Uh, there is some difference between, I've noticed in, uh, between, uh, shoes and, and, and with different foams and stuff like that. The precision is not always the same, but the, uh, uh it's always, uh, uh, if you wear the same shoes, you get always always get the same readings, distance, power, whatever um, pace. So it's fairly um, consistent. Um, another thing, um, apparel. Um, I just got my third pair of uh, Tracksmith uh, half Reggies, uh, <laughs> uh, which is um, uh, half length. Uh, um what do you call them uh half tight yeah um and um they're, they're they're simply amazing they're soft they're you know they're they're um you don't you don't really feel them when you go running and they have lots of storage space so i can you know usually when you go running these days you always need to take some some stuff with you <laughs> uh i usually take my atm card with me and uh, uh, i need to take my mask with me for if i'm stopped by the police or anything like that my keys that sort of stuff it all goes in there without issue it's um it's fantastic gear i think um that's more or less it for me yeah thank you yos that was great okay Mar uh ryan let's go ryan and then marcel all right thanks sam my name is ryan eiler uh i'm on the sea coast of new hampshire right now although i call boston home most of the time I think I got about 27, 2800 miles in of running this year, which I thought was good, but it tends to be about uh, average among the road trail run crowd. Um, and as for vertical, it's basically neg negligible living around here on the East Coast, uh, especially as compared to my colleagues out West. Um, but a pretty good year running, no big injuries. Can't complain. Um, all of the virtual uh, time trials I did this year were on behalf of road trail run. So like you said, we did the Ekaden, um, and I just threw in a few 5K time trials here and there just to test out some of these fancy, high-end, really exciting shoes, which is a good time. Uh, there's two particularly good loops here in Boston. Uh, one is the now abandoned headquarters of Reebok, um, and the other is a loop that goes around Harvard's uh, football stadium, which is closed to traffic and super flat and super fast and maybe a little helpful GPS-wise because I think Garmin gets a little confused with the uh, stadium sitting there. but that's it for running for this year. Um, in terms of shoes, there's a little bit of overlap with uh, the two guys who went before me. Uh, we didn't coordinate that, but I think uh, there's a common theme here. Um, in terms of training shoes, the two that come to mind for me are the Saucony Ride 13, which I beat to dead uh, probably within two months of getting them. Uh, you know, Out of the box, they weren't really a head turner, but uh, putting them on, they're just a no BS kind of really well engineered and super light for the amount of cushion they have uh, performance shoe. The upper is just incredible. There's tons of cushion, a nice drop on them. The rubber outsole, you know, lasted at least four or 500 miles uh, before I, you know, squashed them down and killed them. Um, and the other training shoe, which you already mentioned, uh, the Mach 4 is just a no brainer go-to shoe. Uh, 
whenever I just want to go out for a nice easy run, just tack on a whole bunch of junk mileage. Um, the ride is just so buttery. I think there's something to be said about them pairing yeah, that ProFly foam midsole with a non rubber and more rubberized foam outsole. It, it kind of works together really well because um, you don't feel like there's a drastic transition or a drastic difference between what's right on your foot and what's hitting the road. So it just makes it this really cohesive, stable package. Really nice damping. You know, it's maybe not the most exciting foam out there, but personally, you know, when I'm running every day, I don't always want this like super highly caffeinated foam trying to rocket me around and, you know, bounce me here and there. I kind of want to just, you know, cruise with my AirPods in sometimes and, uh, you know, zone out. So that's a great shoe for that purpose. And the upper on the Mach 4 is really hard to beat. You know, I hope they don't change anything in the next iteration. Um, in terms of faster shoes, plated shoes, uh, the high-end stuff, uh, again, the Saucony um, Endorphin Pro came out early this year, um, and it's kind of interesting thinking about that shoe and how it sat in my mind back early in the year as compared to how it sits now, because when it first came out, it was really probably one of the first super shoes that I was able to test out, and it had the carbon plate, it had the PB midsole, really explosive, really bouncy. And I, you know, I, I took them out and I ripped a half marathon as fast as I could around the pond because it was just so much fun. And I thought, you know, this is, this is the marathon shoe. This is the distance shoe I'm going to race in. I'm going to, it's going to be my go-to. But as the year went on, you know, we come out with uh, other softer shoes from Brooks and from uh, New Balance and from Asics that are much soft with a light strike, pro, light strike pro foam that you saw in the Adidas shoe. Um, and the, the Saucony's now by comparison feel relatively stiff. Um, and much firmer and denser. So like Yo said, I now prefer that shoe for like tempo runs, faster stuff, faster racing, um, just because I think there are better options now for uh, really long marathon level shoes um, that are a little more forgiving on the knees and joints than the Saucony. But the Saucony is just so energetic. The speed roll, toe off, really gets you going. Um, and it's just a fun shoe all around to wear, super lightweight. Um, and lastly, for me, I would mention the Adios Pro, but those guys already covered the ground pretty well. So I'll mention uh, my favorite shoe overall all around uh, was a New Balance RC Elite. Uh, so again, a plated marathon focused shoe. Um, the uh, fuel cell foam in the heel there are super soft, super bouncy. And, but what most impressed me about this shoe um, is how well packaged that plate is. You put the shoes on and you can feel they're stiff. You can feel they're special, but they don't scream like I'm a, I'm a high-end level Vaporfly uh, Adios Pro kind of shoe. It's, it's uh, much more inviting of a shoe, I guess is the best way of saying it. And, and while you get that high-end world-class performance from it, it doesn't want to like rip your legs off and, and you can easily go for you know, a recovery run in the shoe because they're so soft and forgiving. But at the same time, you can you know, push a half marathon, marathon, full pace, and they won't be holding you back. Um, the upper was super breathable. They used a really interesting outsole called Dyneride. It's a bunch of little triangular, really hard rubber triangular pieces bonded to kind of a really hard, uh, clear piece of plastic sheeting, which gripped the road really well. They seem like indestructible. Um, unfortunately, I think we've learned that the Dyneride is so expensive to manufacture that it probably won't be coming back. Uh, word on the street. So, but you know, I enjoyed it while it lasts. Uh, my shoes probably have another. 200 miles on them um, and it's it's really the shoe I feel like I like to lace up when I want to just indulge myself um, and have a special kind of run if, if any distance. So Ryan a question of, of all those uh, 5k's you ripped uh, which one was the which shoe was the fastest? The fastest uh, the Adios Pro was probably the fastest I would say you know we're splitting hairs the RC Elite I was probably only five seconds slower um, and again, it depends what I ate for breakfast, who knows, you know, you know, what day, what course, but, uh, those two are definitely neck and neck. But if I had to, if I had to pull out all the stops, I'd probably go for the audios, bro. And, and what kind of paces were you going? Uh, what kind of, with those five Ks? Uh, I was, a, I was a shade under 15 minutes for the five Ks, um, and around 30 minutes for the 10 K that we did for the Ekaden. But yeah, I think I used, I used the audios pro for the five K and I used the RC elite for the, uh, the 10 K I did over the Harvard Stadium. Great, thanks. Any other thoughts? And we'll move to Marcel. Now that covers it uh, for me uh, for the decade of 2020. 
Uh, but we got some new shoes in the pipeline that I, I won't show you here on camera, but I'm looking forward to our review on them and hopefully starting the year on a good foot, no pun intended. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Marcel? Yeah, hello guys. Uh, hi from Germany. Uh, God, good to have you all uh, here in the call. Um, like probably all of us, um, 2020 was uh, weird as far as training and especially racing is concerned. Um, for me, um, I go on uh, trail races all around uh, Europe in normal years, so to speak. Um, but uh, this year I uh, focused on, uh, on the very slow runs uh, mainly. That means uh, building the aerobic base on the road. And um, therefore also um, I focused on uh, testing road shoes this year, um, but uh, of course also had an eye on uh, new developments in the trail market, which will talk about in a separate call uh, later on. Um, as far as uh, shoes uh, are concerned, my absolute favorite was uh, uh, before mentioned uh, the Kony Speed, um, which I have in the black um, sample uh, here at hand. Um, I really, really like it for almost every distance uh, beside recovery runs. Uh, I started with uh, fast intervals and uh, tempo runs. And uh, later on, um, I also used it more and more also for longer distances. Um, only for the recovery runs, it was a little too unstable for me. Um, my ankles are very prone to injuries. Um, but this year I figured out uh, to stay injury free uh, so far. And um, for me, I, I learned it the hard way that I shouldn't run too soft shoes. For me, that's uh, just a kind of personal preference. Um, therefore, I uh, also tested the Essex Nova Blast uh, this year. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun uh, when you have perfect form and are uh, very recovered. Um, but the uh, Saucony is um, uh, much firmer, still bouncy, uh, and, and still uh, has a, a soft uh, touch, but it's not mushy in any kind. So um, I got along with it very, very well and uh, use it for almost every kind of run um, besides recovery runs. Uh, what I might uh, add is the fact that I have a quite wide forefoot and uh, the Saucony Speed um, works with it very, very well because of the soft upper. Uh, so Saucony Speed, my road shoe of the year uh, 2020 for sure. Um, for all the very slow miles and when I recognize that uh, the boots are really beaten up, um, then I like uh, to use the above uh, before mentioned uh, the Kony Endorphin Shift, also the black uh, colorway, perhaps I'm a little bit, little bit boring uh, as far as colors are concerned, uh, but that's uh, definitely my favorite. Um, it's uh, it's uh, firm, it has a very stable uh, run, but it's not a stability shoe. That's uh, what I really like about it. And um, because of the uh, before mentioned uh, speed roll technology, it really, it pushes you forward, but not in a bouncy uh, way. You get uh, rolling very easy. Um, so that's my uh, shoe I, I choose for the slower ones and the legs are already beaten up. And uh, for pure recovery runs, um, I'll go with the Saucony Triumph. It's a 17. Um, it's a shoe from 2019. Um, but for guys like me with a wider forefoot, um, it's uh, better than the 18 because I recognize that the 18 is uh, narrower in the forefoot. Um, all other guys, you should uh, pick the 18 uh, because um, it's lighter. It doesn't have uh, so much um, material in the in the heel cup, um, especially. So um, 
that's an only Zucconi lineup as far as the road favorites um, are concerned. Um, but that's how I um, choose my favorite for these three use cases. Thank you very much, Marcel. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 